The 20th century witnessed the dominant positions of two large consortiums in the oil world, the Standard Oil Company of New Jersey and the Royal Dutch Shell. The demand for crude oil grew over the years due to the Industrial Revolution, the development of automobiles, and World War I. Political and legal changes shifted the world platform, with a newfound interest in Venezuela as an oil-producing country. In the 1920s, the Lago Petroleum Corporation, a subsidiary of Pan American, acquired a substantial piece of land for petroleum exploration in Venezuela. Many would say that this initiated a historical connection between Aruba and the petroleum industry. Crude oil from the Maracaibo Lake Basin had to be transported by flat-bottom lake tankers to large tankers in deeper areas due to an obstacle at a lake's entrance. The increasing demand for oil prompted the company to explore nearby transshipment locations with deep terminals, Aruba being one of them. In 1924, Richard Johannes Bujon guided John Oswald Boyd and Robert Roger to Aruba looking for a good place to establish a bunkering and transshipment station. They were impressed by the deep, sheltered harbor on the island's southeast shore and Aruba's stable government under the Dutch Kingdom. Convinced of Aruba's suitability, Pan American Oil established the Lago Shipping Company in Aruba in February 1925. A refinery was later built next to the terminal, and in 1929, the Lago Oil Refinery begin operations with a capacity of 110,000 barrels per day. Lago became one of the largest oil refineries in the world with a maximum daily capacity of 440,000 barrels of oil products. The high influx of immigrants brought many new nationalities and traditions to the island. Lago certainly contributed to the infrastructure of the island, but most importantly, it created jobs knowledge, and a solid foundation for economic growth. During World War II, the Lago Oil Company refined two out of every 16 barrels of high-octane gasoline for the Allied forces. Tipped off to this information, the Germans launched torpedoes targeting the Lago refinery and its oil tankers, including the Pedernales and the SS Oranjestad. Other wartime events included the sinking of the German ship Antilla, just off the coast of Malmok. Lago accomplished a milestone on March 15, 1945, when it officially refined its billionth barrel of oil. This milestone was achieved in great part under the leadership of Lago's first president, Lloyd G. Smith, the namesake of Aruba's L.G. Smith Boulevard. After the war, Lago invested heavily in the reconstruction of the refinery but modernization and increased competition led to major layoffs starting in 1951. Lago Company went from 8,300 to 1,596 workers over a span of 32 years, and in 1985, the Lago Oil Refinery closed. Lago had served as the backbone of Aruba's economic and social development, but with its closing, Aruba had to refocus its economic activities with more reliance on the tourism industry. In 1989, an agreement was signed between the Aruban government and the Coastal Corporation of Texas to refurbish the shuttered Lago refinery. After investing more than $250 million, the Coastal Corporation officially began operating the Coastal Aruba refinery on April 20, 1991. By the year 2000, after investing more than $1 billion, Coastal had increased the refinery's capacity to 280,000 barrels per day. El Paso Energy merged with the Coastal Corporation in 2001, adding a complex natural gas pipeline network to the Coastal portfolio. But El Paso's financials were not as healthy as they seemed, leading to the sale of all the refinery assets in the U.S. Valero Energy bought the Aruba refinery in 2004, renaming it Valero Aruba Refinery. The Valero Aruba refinery enjoyed the golden years of refining up until 2007. Valero Aruba accumulated more than $2 billion in profits, but then the global financial crisis hit, and Valero Aruba 
was forced to halt operations in 2009, failing to make the investments needed to handle the production of the new ultra-low sulfur products that went into effect in 2009. After a brief startup in 2011, the refinery was completely shut down in November 2012. The search for the next operator of the Aruba refinery commenced in 2012. At the end of 2014, after several failed attempts with others such as PetroChina, Petrobras, PDVSA and EcoPetrol, Sedco Petroleum Corporation approached the government of Aruba to explore the possibility of operating the refinery as a crude upgrader facility. On June 10, 2016, the government of Aruba signed a deal with Sedco Petroleum to reopen the refinery. In August 2016, Valero Aruba Holding signed a transfer and master settlement agreement with the Aruban government to put a halt to the potential dismantlement of the refinery. With the Aruban government as its sole shareholder, Refineria de Aruba NV RDA was incorporated on October 1, 2016 to be the landlord of the properties that Land Aruba acquired from Valero Aruba Holding. CITCO officially agreed to participate in and fund the rehabilitation of the Aruba refinery to operate as an upgrader of ultra-heavy crude from the Orinoco Basin, which contains 297 billion barrels of proven reserves. Additionally, CITCO agreed to continue transshipment and marine operations. Pursuant to this agreement, RDA agreed to lease its assets to CITCO Aruba Refinery NV CAR, to carry out its upgrading operations. The lease is for a term of 15 years with a 10-year extension option. The reopening of the refinery will be accompanied by the construction of a natural gas pipeline running from Venezuela to Aruba to further reduce operation costs and refinery emissions. When fully operational, Sitco Aruba will provide employment for about 1,100 people with preference given to locals and will be an important contributor to Aruba's GDP. RDA's main activities encompass compliance monitoring of the agreements signed with Sitco Aruba, creating new ventures for fuels marketing and supply Aruba NV, developing and monitoring environmental, health and safety standards jointly developing a microalgae pilot plant project with CITGO to reduce carbon emissions, training and developing a certification program in the energy sector. RDA will serve to enhance Aruba's economy and contribute to the quality of life of present and future generations by encouraging socially responsible corporate citizens. With its team of experts, RDA aims to become a key player in the oil and gas industry in the region.